boys and girls, this is Mrs. Walsh bringing you today's virtual art lesson. We have a wonderful little draw along to do together today. We are going to be drawing a Christmas tree with a star at the top and some ornaments on it. I have a Sharpie I'm going to be drawing with, but you should probably be drawing with pencil and have an eraser nearby. So if you make a mistake, you can pause the video, stop, and erase anything that you think you can fix and then turn the video back on when you are ready to catch back up with me. I have a piece of paper I'm drawing on. It is tall and thin, not wide. This is called portrait direction. This is the direction we're going to be drawing in today. We're gonna to start at the middle of the top of our paper. So look at the top of your paper, see how long it is, try and find the middle. We do not want the tree to start right at the top because we need to leave room for our star. So come down a little ways so that you have enough room open to add a star at the top. And we're gonna start by drawing a V on our paper upside down. But instead of the sides of the V being straight lines, we're going to curve them out a little bit. So I start by putting a dot on my paper. That is where I'm gonna start my V. I go back to my dot and I bring the V down and out and try to match the other side down and out. Now these don't have to be perfectly symmetrical because trees aren't perfectly symmetrical. They are lovely, but lovely and imperfect. We're gonna connect the two ends of that V with a zigzag, but not a really tight zigzag, something that's a little bit more gentle and flowing. Watch, it looks like this. Pick up the line and come in and come out and come in and come out and connect. So it looks almost like a little elf's hat, doesn't it? Or it could be snow on top of a mountain. We're gonna come below this in a little bit on each side and bring another layer of the tree down and out, down and out, and connect again with a gentle in down, in, down, in, down, connect. There's the second layer. And we're gonna do that again. Bring two more curve lines out, down and out, and connect. And we have enough room for probably one more layer. Try not to go too close to the bottom because we are going to put a trunk on our tree with a little rug underneath of it. Down and out, down and out. Gently wiggle some lines, curvy zigzags to complete our tree. Down from the center of the tree, we're going to bring two straight lines at a bit of an angle off. There's our trunk. And let's close that with a slightly curving line. And you have a beautiful Christmas tree coming along on that paper, I bet you. Now, to add a rug underneath the tree, I'm gonna turn my paper. I'm gonna start up the trunk a little ways and bring a line out, curve forward, come down in front of the tree curve back around, think of it like a train track, and you want to end it on this side of the trunk at about the same height as you started it, so it makes sense visually. We're going to bring a little line down on one side and a line down on the other side and connect those by following that same curve that we drew for the edge of the rug. Wow, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Now, I know we have practiced stars sometimes in art class. I don't know if you've had that lesson yet or not. We're not drawing the traditional star that you keep your pencil on the paper the whole time. I'm gonna show you a cleaner way to do this so there's no lines in the middle of the star. So go to the top of your tree, leave room, because we're gonna start with the top of the star that is just that upside down V quite a bit smaller. It's almost like a little bird beak looking up in the air. Then you're gonna bring two short straight lines in from the side of that out a little ways and then bring them back in. And then they're gonna go back out 
and out. And when you come in, you want to meet in the middle. Meet in the middle. And there's your star. If it's a little too high off the tree, you could put a line to connect it, or you could put, or you could let it float up there. That's okay, it could be a magic star. And then we're gonna add some Christmas bulbs to here. So within each layer of the tree, depending on how big you wanna make them, I'm gonna put one there. That looks like I could probably have enough room for maybe three here. And a couple more in this section. Not too crazy, because I want to be able to color all these. And if I make a hundred ornaments on that tree, that's a lot of coloring to do. If I just do a couple of larger and a couple of smaller, that will make it fun to color without it becoming too much. One more. Wow, that looks gorgeous. How did you do? Do you like your tree? I'll bet it's beautiful. Now, whether you have crayons, colored pencils, magic markers, anything that you have to color with is perfectly acceptable. One of the things I like to do when I color the Christmas tree is layer colors. So instead of just coloring the tree green with the green crayon like this, I might start by coloring it with a green crayon like this. But I find that if I find another layer of green that's a different shade, so this one is darker, and I go in and I build that up over top now, I can make my tree much more realistic looking and give it kind of a three-dimensional quality that I wouldn't get if I was just coloring with one shade of green. I also find it's really helpful as you're coloring the tree. Instead of coloring and changing the paper and coloring in a different direction, the tree's pine needles would all be going down, down and out, like the shape that we made each layer of the tree. So it's a good idea as you're coloring to be coloring like you're curving off towards the left when you're on the left side of the tree. It comes straight down in the middle of the tree and then it curves off to the right on the right side of the tree. And I'll show you another trick here. When I go in and blend my light color in with my dark color. And there's nothing wrong with blending dark and light. And then if you find the balance is off, like this layer is a lot lighter than that one, it's okay to put a layer of light green in here and then go over top a little bit more with some dark if it seems like that layer doesn't match the one above it. And I want to show you a trick I have for coloring this really realistically too. So I'm now building up the dark over top of the light and the first layer of dark. And it's starting to look much more like that layer above, isn't it? Now, here's a really good trick. Where this layer of boughs is laying over top of the second section of the tree, I'm gonna really push hard on this crayon and make it darker right here at the top where my Sharpie line is. And that makes a little shadow effect. And I can even get brave sometimes and go in and use a darker color than that to show this shadow. So I'm not pushing nearly as hard with the brown crayon but I'm bringing even a darker color into there to make it look very 3D. I love how that is looking, but I don't want this obvious line between where it's dark and where it lightens back up. So I am gonna layer a little bit more dark green on there. I'm gonna lighten up as I move down the branches where light, more light would be hitting them. And then I might do one more layer of the light over top of that just to make it look as nice as I can. Then I would start building with the light and dark green again, add the shadow right below where my Sharpie line is and continue this process. When you go to color your Christmas bulbs, I'm gonna grab, uh, yeah, I think I like that color. That's a red violet. Here's a nice trick to make it look shiny and like a really special, beautiful Christmas tree. When you go to color the bulb in, leave a little area always in the same spot on the bulb white 
and then color in the rest of the bulb. See how if I color the Christmas bulb like that, it makes it look like there is light shining on it. Even the small ones leave a little area of white. And I'm always placing it in the same spot at the top of the bulb. You can come in when you're all done with your bulbs. I take a darker crayon or marker or colored pencil and opposite where I put the highlight on the bulb, I'm going to put a little shadow underneath where it's casting a shadow on the branches on the tree. And that makes a really three-dimensional, realistic looking tree when you color it, doesn't it? Finish up coloring your tree, color all your bulbs, add color to underneath your tree on the rug. Don't forget that trunk. And the trunk is also one of those things where you can add that blending technique. So of course I'm gonna color the trunk brown to complete this. But the branches of the tree would be hiding the light from the trunk as it's closer to the branches. So again, I would take black up closer to where the pine tree has branches that are blocking the light and put a darker area the higher you are up on the tree trunk. Pretty cool effect just with crayons, isn't it? So when you get done, your tree could look something like this. What a fabulous, hey, I missed the bulb. You see that? I'm gonna grab my red crayon and fix that if you, if you wanna stick with me. Not red, violet, red this time, because that time I used red. And let's fix that, that little guy. There we go. There we go. There is your draw along Christmas tree, boys and girls. I hope you enjoy drawing along with me, making this fabulous Christmas tree. I hope you have a great day. Thank you for showing up and participating with me in virtual art class. Have a great day.